Hi, nice to see you. In this video, I will talk to you about my preferred 11 tips to get good wildlife photography. So if you want to know, stick around. Hi, my name is Mario Kilian and welcome back to another video. Hi, are you like I struggling to get sharp pictures in this cold weather? Well, maybe you have the same issue than I. You have the wall set up, you have the correct exposure, you have everything okay, and you are doing all the techniques you know to get sharp pictures. But you don't know why you take a picture in this climate for some birds and they are blurry. Well, maybe the issue can be the lens hood. And so here came the first tip. Try to take off the lens hood. The lens hood has a main function and that is, of course, to avoid the flare and of course to protect the lens. But sometimes it can keep the heat inside and produce some heat haze inside the hood. So take the lens off and try again. Now you will get really sharp pictures. And now the tip number two, to get real good wildlife pictures, you always have to take care about the background. But in this time, the most important thing and what usually is one of the worst errors is to get white spots in the background. Naturally, or I, when I see and when we all see a pictures, the eye goes automatic to the white spot. And that uh, will make your pictures don't look good. So try always to avoid the white spots in the background of your pictures. Sometimes you can correct this just moving one feet to the right, to the left, one feet up, one feet down. But just try to avoid these black spots in the background of your pictures. The third tip to perfect wildlife pictures. Try always to get to your preferred spot. Don't try to take a ride to a different spot, to a new spot. No, go to the spot you are preferred, you know. In this spot where you always go, you know where the birds are, you know at what hour the birds will be, how will be the light. So try to be perfect and expert in the spot you like. Don't try to go to different spots because all will be new and you need to learn in this new spot about the light, about when will the birds be there. And it's a lot of things you have to know and maybe this will be a day of wild photography that you will lose. So get a good spot and try to go always to the same spot. That is the best for you. The best of going always to the same spot is that you will be expert to take wildlife pictures in this spot. So go once and once to the same spot and learn every time you go something new, how to get the best picture in this place where I really love. The fourth tip. The fourth tip is try to isolate the animal you're taking the pictures. And I really don't mean that just take only of one animal and avoid to have more than one in the same pictures. No, I'm talking about when you take a photo of one animal, avoid that are parts of other animals inside of the picture. Of course, you can crop the image, but the best is to wait. Let the animals move, move to this side and try then when the animal is isolated to take the best picture. Sometimes it's just a matter of time. Wait a few minutes and you will get the perfect photo. And about the same, the fifth tip. It's not necessary to get the entire animal inside the frame. Sometimes just to taking the pictures of his head, of his eyes, or who knows, maybe another part of the animal will get you some really good wildlife pictures. So don't be frustrated if you can get the whole animal inside the frame. 
sometimes only the head and some photos I really love are only of the eye of the animal will be some amazing wildlife photos. Tip number six. This is a tip I really love. You don't have the budget for a long lens. You don't want to spend a lot of money in the best long 600 millimeter lens. Well, something to get really professional photos is to get close to the animal. How can I get this? Use camouflage. And the best, if you can afford a $100 blind and you can uh, hide inside this blind and wait, you will get really some close photos of animals. And this will be really professional photos. So don't spend a lot of money in a really big lens. Just spend a little bit money in a good blind or in a good camouflage, and then you will get really good wildlife photos. Uh, now, tip number seven. <laughs> You need to know your gear. That's something I have repeated in all of most my, in my previous videos. But there is something very important, and this is about the tripod. You need to know what to use. A tripod, a monopod, a fluid head, a gimbal, a ball head, whatever. For example, if you are more up to taking videos, the best is to get a really solid tripod with a fluid head. That will help you to get the best videos. If you are love to walk and taking pictures, a key factor is to have a very light tripod, maybe with a ball head, and that you can carry everything. If you are more up to taking wide pictures with more animals, well, maybe a gimbal. By the way, the solution I really prefer and it's the most comfortable for me is to use my monopod with a gimbal. It gives me a lot of different solutions and the flexibility I need really to take good pictures. So find out what is the best for you in tripod, monopod, ball head, gimbal or fluid head for the kind of wildlife pictures or videos you really like to do. The lake is absolutely frozen. The last weeks have been very cold here in Germany. So let's go to tip number eight. The tip number eight is about respect in any kind of ways. You have to get all the respect for wildlife you can do. For example, you need to walk in silence slowly so you don't care the animals. You need, of course, to respect all the laws. If you can't go with your car inside to this place, please don't uh, try any trash in the, in the floor. Try always to be clean, to be respectful. That is something very important. Of course, don't go where you're not allowed to go. Don't try to break rules. Be always respectful with nature. It is, of course, easy. And that will help you in the future that others respect wildlife too. And that in your favorite spot, you will always find the, this best place, clean, still with these animals, and don't scare it so much anytime you come there. So respect wildlife. Okay, now Tip number, number, number nine. <laughs> to be alone is boring. To walk alone in the woods, to walk alone uh, to the lake, is, it's something boring. The best is to get some friends. You can find friends in networks, in Facebook, in the local newspaper, in Instagram, maybe talking with your neighbors, there is someone else that likes to do wildlife too. And maybe with this other network and other friends, you can discover maybe better places than your preferred spots, maybe new techniques. It is always good to have this synergy between others. So try not to go alone. It's something boring. I have sometimes take tours of about 
eight, nine hours walking alone. And that's a little bit boring. So try to find friends to do these wildlife photos. It will motivate you more and it will help you to get some hints your friends teaches you. And of course, that will improve your wildlife photography. So don't be alone. <laughs> Tip number 10. This is one of, uh, I think, one of the most important, at least for me. Be comfortable. And I mean, use the right wear, use the best shoes, use uh, the, a good jacket, but try to be warm when it is cold and to be fresh when it is a warm day. Use sunblock, some of this mosquito spray, but always try to wear and use things that made you wildlife photography day more comfortable. For example, today <laughs> I need, of course, my gloves. I need my head. I need my jacket, my pullover, and of course, some really warm shoes because walking for hours in the snow is something if I don't have the correct dress, it will be a nice day. So make your photography wildlife day comfortable. It will help you to improve the photos. It will make you more happy, more warm, or maybe more fresh. But all this helps to get good wildlife photos. Today we have about minus 10 degrees and I guess it is going colder and colder. Luckily, I have the best wear to be in this climate. And now tip number 11. It will be related to the last tip. Sometimes a wildlife photography day will be a long day. So the most important is, of course, to take you some snacks, to take you a hot coffee. Water is absolutely important if you're in a warm climate. And you need to, maybe you can even take your lunch, like I do it sometimes, but a wildlife photography can be a long day. So remember, I love to take sneakers, for example. <laughs> it's not an advertising. Or some snacks, some sandwiches. But without my coffee and without my sandwich, I never go out to do wildlife photography. So it's a good recommendation to do it. All this had to, has to do with to be comfortable when you're taking a wildlife day. Remember, you will be out almost the whole day. So make it a good day. Amazing. Just a few minutes ago, there were two boys swimming in this frozen lake. <laughs> I can't understand this, but well, well, these are all my tips. I hope these tips will help you to improve your wildlife photography. Try to practice this always, every time you go out. It will help you a lot. If you like this video, maybe you consider to subscribe or maybe, who knows, to give it a like so others can learn about these tips to improve their wildlife photography too. And now, go out and take your best pictures. I know you can. And I hope to see you next week unless I cannot do a video to these weather conditions, but I hope I can do. So, let's see you. Bye-bye.